I think the what I want to talk about is really uh, sort of how we see things in WWF and the challenges in communicating our work and also advocating for the issues that we, we deal with. But I want to start off first by saying that uh, my impression of climate change issues is like uh, talking about an imaginary, uh, it's an imaginary conversation because often it's about, it's like having a conversation about aliens and what would happen if aliens were to land on the planet and what would the world look like. So, I mean, I think sometimes the conversation uh, uh, tends to, to remain there because I think uh, the reason why I mention that because it, a conversation about aliens is quite interesting, actually, because people like fantasizing about it. And I suppose, the, if I can summarize, I think a little bit of the media coverage uh, and the debates that go on about uh, climate change, uh, but uh, like that conversation about aliens and what would happen to the world if they were to, to, to dominate uh, the world. It actually never gets onto the ground, and I think I'm not sure who's at fault with that. But, uh, <coughs> The other thing about WWF is that there are also sorts of stereotypes about WWF. Sometimes it doesn't help to have a panda because everybody wants to hug a panda. And when you go to the US, they think you're the World Wrestling Federation. So uh, we sometimes sit in between being hugged and, and being thrown down by, uh, by different types of people. But actually, uh, in the last three years uh, since uh, I've been there, because there's been lots of new sort of leadership in WWF, uh, we were, if you want, very embedded with uh, business, so everybody thought we were pro-business. Uh, and I was, to my dismay, very surprised that WWF never worked with government, neither did have very active roots in broader civil society, particularly uh, the environmental justice groups, um, and then also with labor. And part of the reason why we broaden uh, our constituency base, including uh, parliamentarians, faith groups, and so on, uh, is really to put a challenge in front of us to say if we're talking about the issues that uh, require the translation of uh, scientific information to public knowledge and public policy issues uh, and this knowledge has to be relevant not only to business but a whole set of constituencies out there who we're trying to get to understand the importance of these issues and what it and I think the main point I want to make here is not just about public knowledge, but what it means for public choices in terms of uh, business, in terms of the investment uh, uh, and the understanding of these issues and implications of how they do their business, uh, in terms of how the government makes public choices between building coal-fired power stations versus renewables or, in, or nuclear and, it, and its impact uh, on the South African economy, and that affects not just uh, business, but also affects uh, ordinary citizens and workers. So I think this has been the biggest battle uh, that I think we have is con uh, turning the conversation from science to public knowledge and then into uh, public decision making, which is, in my view, a collective thing. It's not just a discourse be that happens between two people, but it's a discourse that happens between different constituencies and how do we actually facilitate that.